Hello, my name is Mandy Borsico. I'm a two-dimensional artist and I work in graphite and sometimes in carbon pencil, chalk and charcoal, and of course I paint. Today I'll be showing you some tips and techniques in getting started with your figure drawing. This is all about how light reveals the form. And in using this method, you'll achieve a much greater realism in your art. I'll be working from a master copy as reference, which is standard practice in classical drawing. The materials I'll be using are, first off, paper, it's going to be Stonehenge White, the Stettler Grey Putty Eraser, an Art Advantage drawing board, and also the Tombow Eraser. In terms of pencils, I'll be using the Stettler Lumograph pencils. And to start off with, it's going to be a 2B. The first stage in a figure drawing is the block-in. And you want to spend about five minutes observing your figure and the pose and the balance of your figure. We need to choose a plumb line. In this case, I've chosen a plumb line that comes off the foot over here and I've drawn it right onto the master copy. The next stage would be to divide the entire height of the drawing into four. This being the top, the bottom, the middle, the top quarter and the bottom quarter. How I like to start a drawing is from the bottom going up. And so down at the bottom are the feet and I would measure the whole width of the feet and compare that to my bottom quarter. And that goes one and three quarter times. Now I need to find what goes into my bottom quarter one and three quarter times. I'm measuring certain points to get the big proportions right. Now the big proportions are what belongs to the legs, what belongs to the torso, what belongs to the head, and the points that I'm measuring are very specific. There are the changes of direction for any bent joints such as knees, the elbows. This is not the time for fine detail. This is a time to establish the big proportions. The next step in our process is creating the construct. The construct stage is fairly quick, but crucial. Observe where the center line is on the model's torso, and that is the construction line. This will give you the gesture and the swing of the torso, as well as the division of left and right for proper perspective. Once that's done, we can place a line across the center line that is the bottom of the pecs or the breasts. We'll also need a center line for the head to place the feature lines to the left and to the right of that. The next stage is the shadow shapes. Just as in the first stage, we did a general idea of the outline, the block in, now we're gonna do a general idea of where the shadow shapes will go and put a light tone in that area. To determine where the light is coming from when we're doing a master copy, we look for cast shadows. And off of this model's neck, I can see that the cast shadow is going off to the bottom right, which tells me that the light source is coming from the top left. Basically, we're constructing a map. The map can be quite general, and then we go in and refine it. The next stage is articulation. Now that we've placed this light tone into our shadow areas, we're in a better position to judge our shapes and our proportion. Now we can deal with our subject as a mass. Assess whether all the large shapes are right and make corrections to the big picture first. Make sure your measurements for quarters and halves are right. And the most important thing is whether the top quarter of your figure has been properly apportioned to the head and shoulders. In this stage, we're creating a two-tone light and dark silhouette. The two tones are the white of the paper for the lights and the value of the shadows. This stick that I'm resting my hand on is called a marl stick. And I use it so that my hand isn't resting on the paper and smudging the drawing. You'll notice that the lines that I'm doing, they're all straight lines. And this is what we call straight line articulation. Straight line articulation is really necessary to pinpoint exactly where lines and forms change direction. It gives a certain level of accuracy to our drawing as well as structure. I'm now going to clean up the drawing by erasing all the construction lines and all the sketchy ghosty lines. The next stage is the fall of light. The fall of light is the idea that the light diminishes 
as it falls away from the overhead light source. You may have noticed this value strip over here. In this system, we're using nine values on our scale, one through nine. One being the white of the paper, nine being the blackest black that is possible with the medium that we're using. Five is exactly halfway. In putting down a tone for our shadows, which is a five, we're establishing a base for our shadows. The values for our lights will go from one through four. I'll be switching to an HB pencil for this step because now we're going into the lights. The 2B is the basis for the shadows. HB will be the basis for our lights. What we need to do is place a smooth gradation of tone from the ankles up to the bottom of the rib cage. If you've never worked on Stonehenge, you may find that you're not used to the kind of tooth that this paper has. But this tooth is essential for picking up all the layers of graphite that we put on. Also, Stonehenge is amazing in terms of letting go of graphite. So when you go to erase, the paper will let that graphite go with absolutely no damage. It's time to move on to the next stage, which is big form modeling. This stage changes your drawing from one that has a graphic look into a volumetric statement. Keep in mind that our guiding principle is that we always work from the biggest form, the biggest idea, to smaller and smaller ideas, forms and details. We want to have predictability and consistency. So Stedtler will help us in achieving repeatable actions. Engage your conceptual brain the part that is going to see each part of the model in its most basic geometric form. Now that we've established the context for our lights, we turn our attention back to the shadows. The stage is called Variations of the Darks. In this stage, we aim to bring all our shadows to a complete finish. For those areas which need to be considerably darker, for example, the hair in shadow, we would use a 3B. And for some which just need a slight bit of darkening, we're going to be using an HB. The tonal range in the dark should be minimized so that one's eye is less drawn to the shadows. Then we go into this area, this is bed bug line, and previously we'd had just one mass of shadow that included the shadow of the forearm, form shadow, and this cast shadow that the forearm is casting onto the belly. So this is a time at which we want to separate out those shadows and treat them as we see them. So the form shadow over here, we need to reinforce this bed bug line and we need to turn the form. And where we go into cast shadow, the forearm is really close. It's actually stuck to this belly over here. So where it's directly touching the abdomen, that's really, really dark and has its own little form shadow, including bed bug line. But what's directly beneath the hand is the cast shadow. So darker near the object that is casting the shadow. For the final stage of the drawing, the rendering of the lights, time should slow down. We should take great care to render the lights beautifully. And since time is slowing down, for today's demonstration, I'm just going to be working on the torso. When it comes to sharpening up edges and very defined shapes, what we should be using is our Tombow eraser. Now in the lights, we need to switch up pencils and use the harder and lighter pencils. The darkest we're gonna be using is an HB. We need to maintain the dominance of the governing larger volumes. Small details must always be subject to fitting into the larger context. Ensure that each form has a light, a mid, and a dark value to create the illusion of volume. In this way, we can convey the entire breadth and complexity of the human form in one drawing. There you have it, the eight stages of a figure drawing. Doing a drawing in pencil might be one of the most basic skills, but it will be one of the most important skills you'll ever master. I'm Mandy Borsico with Opus Art Supplies and have fun with your drawing.